10 Best Stories of O. Henry The Ransom of Red Chief It looked like a good thing, but wait till I tell you. We were down south in Alabama, Bill Driscoll and myself, when this kidnapping idea struck us. It was, as Bill afterward expressed it, during a moment of temporary mental apparition. But we didn't find that out till later. There was a town down there, as flat as a flannel cake, and called Summit, of course. It contained inhabitants of as undeleterious and self-satisfied a class of peasantry as ever clustered around a maypole. Bill and me had a joint capital of about $600, and we needed just $2,000 more to pull off a fraudulent town lot scheme in Western Illinois with. We talked it over on the front steps of the hotel. Philoprogeniativeness, says we, is strong in semi-royal communities. Therefore, and for other reasons, a kidnapping project ought to do better there than in the radius of newspapers that send reporters out in plain clothes to stir up talk about such things. We knew that Summit couldn't get after us with anything stronger than constables and maybe some lackadaisical bloodhounds and a diatribe or two in the weekly farmer's budget. So it looked good. We selected for our victim the only child of a prominent citizen named Ebenezer Dorset. The father was respectable and tight, a mortgage fancier, and a stern, upright collection plate passer and forecloser. The kid was a boy of ten, with bas-relief freckles, and here the colour of the cover of the magazine you buy at the newsstand when you want to catch a train. Bill and me figured that Ebenezer would melt down for a ransom of $2,000 to a cent. But wait till I tell you. About two miles from Summit was a little mountain, covered with a dense cedar break. On the rear elevation of this mountain was a cave. There we stored provisions. One evening, after sundown, we drove in a buggy past old Dorset's house. The kid was in the street, throwing rocks at a kitten on the opposite fence. Hey, little boy, says Bill. Would you like to have a bag of candy and a nice ride? The boy catches Bill neatly in the eye with a piece of brick. That will cost the old man an extra five hundred dollars, says Bill, climbing over the wheel. That boy put up a fight, like a welterweight cinnamon beer. But, at last, we got him down in the bottom of the buggy and drove away. We took him up to the cave, and I hitched the horse in the cedar brake. After dark, I drove the buggy to the little village three miles away, where we had hired it, and walked back to the mountain. Bill was pasting court plaster over the scratches and bruises on his features. There was a burning behind the big rock at the entrance of the cave, and the boy was watching a pot of boiling coffee, with two buzzard tail feathers stuck in his red hair. He points a stick at me when I come up and says, Ha! Cursed pale face! Do you dare to enter the camp of Red Chief, the terror of the plains? He's all right now, says Bill, rolling up his trousers and examining some bruises on his shins. We're playing Indian. We're making Buffalo Bill's show look like magic lantern views of Palestine in the town hall. 
I'm old Hank, the trapper, Red Chief's captive, and I'm to be scalped at daybreak. By Geronimo, that kid can kick hard. Yes, sir, that boy seemed to be having the time of his life. The fun of camping out in a cave had made him forget that he was a captive himself. He immediately christened me Snake Eye, the spy, and announced that, when his braves returned from the warpath, I was to be broiled at the stake at the rising of the sun. Then we had supper, and he filled his mouth full of bacon and bread and gravy, and began to talk. He made a during dinner speech something like this. I like this fine. I never camped out before. But I had a pet possum once, and I was nine last birthday. I hate to go to school. Rats ate up sixteen of Jimmy Talbot's aunt's speckled hen's eggs. Are there any real Indians in these woods? I want some more gravy. Does the trees moving make the wind blow? We had five puppies. What makes your nose so red, Hank? My father has lots of money. Are the stars hot? I whipped Ed Walker twice Saturday. I don't like girls. You dasn't catch toads unless with a string. Do oxen make any noise? Why are oranges round? Have you got beds to sleep on in this cave? Amos Murray has got six toes. A parrot can talk, but a monkey or a fish can't. How many does it take to make twelve? Every few minutes, he would remember that he was a pesky redskin, and pick up his stick rifle and tiptoe to the mouth of the cave to rubber for the scouts of the hated pale face. Now and then, he would let out a war whoop that made old Hank the trapper shiver. That boy had Bill terrorized from the start. Red Chief, says I to the kid, would you like to go home? Ah, what for? says he. I don't have any fun at home. I hate to go to school. I like to camp out. You won't take me back home again, Snake Eye, will you? Not right away, says I. We'll stay here in the cave a while. All right, says he. That'll be fine. I never had such fun in all my life. <laughs>